Hello YouTube, it's Atticus. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's well. I am back with you with a gorgeous underwater battle. And this one, yeah, this one is with uh, the guy named Rep. He was actually the last person that I fought in my last replay, you know, the Wood Elf one. So yeah, I uh, did another game with him and this one was so good. It was um, really cool, thematic, under the water, and it's a Dark Elf game uh, versus Skaven. So let's go ahead and just jump to the builds and I'll show it to you guys. So yeah, for uh, my Skaven, or excuse me, for my Dark Elf Lord, we are trying Crone on foot. And that's for a few reasons. Uh, one, she's really good in this matchup. Uh, for two, she'll be on foot so she won't be getting hit by uh, warp throwers or warp lightning throwers. And for her Gaze of uh, Cain, which is that area of effect uh, buff, that it's like a cloud of blood that will buff up your unit. So when you eventually do get into the... Um, combat she's just a really good tank and if you think about it skaven all, all skaven lords are pretty much going to be on foot except for you know the warlord up on a bone breaker or the ones on altar so if he, if he goes lord squirrel or anybody like that crone uh crone hellebrone will absolutely just spank him so i think she's really good in this matchup guys you got to protect her from getting uh sniped down from like gutter runners since she doesn't have a lot of armor but yeah if you protect her she'll do a lot of damage and i do believe she has a little bit of a physical resist uh, yeah, 38% physical resist and some magic resistance, which is even better, uh, you know, when fighting against Gaven, which are really magic heavy. So, all right. So, yeah, for my front line, guys, we got Blades of the Blood Queen. Um, you also got to think that some of that physical resist that uh, she's getting is from these guys just because they have the guardian trait. So keep that in mind. I believe she has like a 15% uh, just base uh, physical resist. I'll have to look into that. And I'll put it in the comments. So we have three Hargan F executioners. Um, being that this was a, a map that I was going to be getting, uh, I, I kind of looked at it, but you know, if you look here in the little mini map, you can see it's going to be kind of choke pointy. Um, so when you know what map you're fighting, it kind of helps you. So having these guys, I need something that's going to hold and just going to chew through his units. Also have a couple units of spears just to pad out the numbers. We have a Black Guard Corsair of Hambos here in the back, and I just absolutely love these uh, these units here. These guys have so many uh, practical applications, I mean, things that you can apply them to, units that they'll actually counter. And yeah, I mean, they have 80 armor too. And guys, we took a risky pick. We have the Caribbus, and this is obviously for the Abyssal Hell, uh, which is a minus, what is it, 8 or is it 10? Somewhere around there, uh, leadership debuff and a radius around him. So you have him, you know, slamming into the middle here it's just going to tear around all these guys you know the Skaven already suffered from low leadership and I mean he's anti-large and poison so this will you know deal with um uh, help it abominations it's just trying to get him in, get him uh there on the approach is the dangerous part you know if, if I could get him past the warp lightnings well then he'll really pay for himself so um also have a cold one night over on this side guys and we have a Sorceress of Beast, and if you see, I just took her on foot. Uh, she's, you know, cut down all her abilities, and all we brought was the uh, Manticore. So, yeah, you've seen me do this a few times in some of my other replays. I'll just hide a Sorceress somewhere, and, uh, you know, the whole game she'll just be casting her Manticore summons. Um, also, have a Harpy over here, guys. And I believe there's one over here as well. Yeah, there's one right here. So that's my build. Um... Let's go ahead and look into uh, Rep's build here, and he's set up kind of cool. I like this idea. You can see he split up his forces. So he has Army Group 1 right here, which consists of a Warp Lightning Cannon uh, with a Spear Unit, Clan Rat Spears in the front, and he has some Gutter uh, gutter Runners of Slings, uh, Poison ones, I believe, uh, here in the back. So what this does is it uh, forces me to have to split up my you know my forces. He's going to have a good line of sight from over here You know that can shoot me from the left on the approach. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like I said kind of just has to make me have to, uh, an extra thing to think about since he is going to be playing defensive and you can also see he's set up on this hill right here so this is going to be a really hard approach either way i attack him i have to go up a hill while getting hit by uh, artillery um for his lord guys he did bring a gray seer of rune which is a cool pick you don't really see a gray seer a lot i don't really know the skaven spell so i won't be able to um name them all but i know he has the lightning one that comes from the sky you know uh whirling help get more Wailing uh, Warp Gale, is that what it's called? Something like that. Um, he has another uh, Warp Threading Cannon right here up on the hill. A Hell Pit Abomination with a Silver Chevron. So yeah, it's really good that I brought that Caribbean. Let's just hope that I can, you know, he'll survive long enough to get here. Front line of Clanorite with Spears, some Clanorite Shields, and then yeah, guys, we have some Death Glow Bombardiers. And these are the anti-infantry one, as you can see here, not the anti-large. So, you know, as my mo troops are already trying to get to be slowed up on this approach, these guys are just going to be shooting in. And it's a really good strategy. I like that. He has a back line of Storm Vermin with Shields which is really good they're gonna last forever he has a couple gutter runner with slings over on this side and yeah that's about his build so let's go ahead and start it guys and we'll see um how this goes so right off the bat as i like to say um my harpies this was about as far as i could vanguard them 
And I'm instantly going to get shot by that warp uh, cannon. It was going to drop, you know, one, two, three, four models. So that sucks. So, I, you know, keep in mind, I don't see that these gutter runners right now. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and just land these harpies, you know, straight into them. But yeah, guys, these guys are going to get absolutely shredded. I mean, just watch from their perspective what happens here. Shred, 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 shred. Pretty much a whole <laughs> unit of harpies just dies before they have a chance um, to even land. So, yeah, that's a really good uh, pick for rep. Over here, though, you can see I got some cold knights. I'm just trying to buy some time, get my units up ahead. And you can see he's going to start opening up with his um, warp landing on the left flank and start shooting into my dread spears, which I'm okay with. As long as he's shooting them and not my other units, we're, uh, we're okay. So, yeah, my forces are moving up here. We have a long distance to, you know, to uh, traverse. So, no matter what, guys, I'm just going to have to take the damage. I'm hoping that he doesn't really, you know, start focusing on the Kribis. And you can see I'm being really patient with these Cold One Knights. I'm not sending them in just because if I do, you know, do so, they're going to die. Over here, though, I am going to start moving up my Harpies. And I was thinking about landing him, uh, landing him right here. But I figured, no, we're going to land him over here. I'm going to be really patient. I'm not going to send him in since we've already lost pretty much one unit. And now, this is what I was afraid of, guys. The Kribbis is going to start getting shot by the Warp... Um Warp lightning cannons. You can see that I'm going to try to veer off a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, just to try and do anything, you know, so I'm not an easy target. Here comes another volley. Oof, direct hit. Couple hit dodges, couple hits, but yeah, guys, this is really unfortunate for my Kribis. Luckily, it has a lot of, you know, life, so it's going to live. Or it'll live for a while. You can see I am going to split up my forces a little bit, guys. I'm going to send a spear unit up ahead to uh, use their shields to kind of screen out for these gutter runners. And we're going to take a Harganef Executioner up this hill as well because all he has defending it is this uh, clan rat with spears. So he won't really be able to, you know, hold up against a Harganef Executioner. And I still have these Cold One Knights over here. You can see I've kind of hidden him behind this wrecked ship right here. And I'm just trying to keep them alive. I'm going to need them in the late game. You can see that over here the Sorceress is starting to walk. I figured I'd have her a little bit closer to cast her Manticore Summon. And yeah, here we go, guys, up on the approach. And you can see that Crone Hellebrone is rushing ahead of her troops on this really thematic, cool, you know, charge of the hill. I am going to get my Manticore Summon there in the back, as you can see. And yeah, my Caribbean is about half health, guys. So here she goes, rushing ahead. Um, we have a really scary uh, Skaven uh, defense force here. But yeah, that Caribbean is just getting hit so bad. But... You know, I have a lot of dangerous troops here. I have Hargan F Executioners. You can see Crone Hellbrone is going to rush ahead. She's not going to give two Fs. And she's going to start charging. And here, as soon as my other forces catch up, um, I am going to cast Gaze of Cain. But Rep is going to get a really good... Uh, one of his lightning spells right onto my grouped up units, which is really unfortunate. But there we go. Let's go ahead and slow it down here for a second. I'm going to get Blaze of K or the Gaze of Kane, which is, if you can see right here, guys, giving me melee attack, weapons damage, leadership. And yeah, this is going to be really good for me. It's going to... Um, create my guys just to be lawnmowers to the Skaven units. Over here, you can see the Manticore Summon I uh, did cast. I'm instantly going to send him into the back. I need to shut down these Death Glow Bombardiers, which I will do here shortly. And over on this side, guys, you can see the Harpies. Um, both units, I am just landing, trying to shut them down. Now over here, you know, my opponents are starting to fight. The Clan Rat with Spears are trying to hold off Arganish, uh, Harganef Executioners and Dread Spears. All meanwhile, these guys are, you know, shooting into the back, but yeah. Balance of Power, though, is really strongly in my favor as a, uh, in Rep's uh, uh, side right now, so it's not, you know, looking too good for me, even though we are looking good here in the center. Let's go ahead and speed it back up here. Uh, my opponent has a full health, health abomination, and my Caribbean is almost dead, and it doesn't have regeneration like the others. Here in the back, guys, you can see the Gunner Runners and the Death Blow Bombardiers are just doing a lot of damage. I mean, this is such a good unit, but... Look how quick we're able to shred through his front line. And by doing so, we just closed, you know, shut down one of his uh, artillery units. And over here, guys, you can see my summon manticore is going to get into the back of these Death Glow Bombardiers. So, yeah, they'll pretty much be worthless as well as they're, uh, you know, as long as that unit's alive. Um, the Kribis and the, the uh, Storm Vermin are going to start battling right now, guys. Let you soak up a little uh, cinematic battle right here. And it's just so cool watching these guys under the sea, you know, fighting. I'm going to get another uh, Manticore summon, guys. And you can see that I have some... My Black Arc Corsairs is providing a little bit of Overwatch. Pony is going to get another good lightning spell, though, guys. He's going to... It looks like he kind of was off a little bit. And he hit a lot of his own Storm Vermin into the back. Over on this side, guys, you can see we have shut down the Warp Lightning Cannon. But my opponent... It's going to slow it down just one more time here. My opponent was able to send one of his Storm Vermins with shields uh, that were on the other side to try to reinforce this side. But I think it's kind of a losing battle just because Storm Vermin are good, but against Hargan F Executioners, they're not going to survive. Um, he still has this unit of uh, gutter runners, though, who are alive. If these um, spear were to die, he could start shooting into these Hargan F Executioners. Over here, my second summon of the uh, Manticore is going to land on these Death Glow Bombardiers, and this is what I really needed. I needed to shut those uh, guys down, and you can see on both sides, 
you know, they're getting shut down by that. Over here, you see that the Grey Seer Ruin is getting surrounded by some Harganite Futurecutioners, which is not really good for him, especially with the Blades of the Blood Queen. And yeah, guys, you can see that my Murderous Prowess is going to proc, which is going to give me a well, a much, much needed attack uh, boost. And you can see those Cold One Knights that I did have in reserve are going to come now, and we're just trying to focus down this Hellpit Abomination, and it's working really good. All meanwhile, that my. Um, my hand bows are just shooting in because the Hellpit Abomination doesn't really have a lot of armor if you guys look at it. 50 armor, so he'll take a lot of damage from that. Um, my Kribbis is still alive, which is going to be creating that terror, which is working really good for me. And it's allowing me to send my Harganet Future Cutioners and all my units that broke through his initial line into the back right here. Especially with the terror of the Manticore, it's just not keeping him alive. Now, you know, the Hellpit Abomination does have the two terrible to die, but it didn't proc, fortunately, unfortunately for him. He's going to get some Skaven Slave uh, Spears that burst out of the dead body, but yeah, it's not going to be enough, um, especially with the units that I do have. Over here, the Gutter Runners are in combat. They're in melee with these Dread Spears, and yeah, they might beat the Dread Spears, but, you know, these Harkin and Executioners are almost at full health, uh, so it's looking really good for me. Um, all across here, guys, you can see that he is, the Skaven player is starting to pull back. And yeah, he's starting to go into little coves and uh, little coves and little areas. It's hard for me to chase them, but you see the blades of the Blood Queen are right. Looks like they're going right off the cliff there to chase those guys. So they're getting a little blood hungry. Um, yeah, at this point, guys, it's really the terror causing of the Caribbean and the Manticores. It's just really breaking his lines. Um, you can see that we're chasing these guys down the hill here. Uh, I still got Crone Hellbrone at really good health. And yeah, he does have some Death Globes, but there's just too much infantry up on his tail. He's not going to be able to really deal with them. And over here, you can see that my Cold One Knights are going to collapse in on these units of uh, Death Globe Bombardiers. Um, he has a unit right here that are coming back, but yeah, short of a miracle, it's going to be really hard for him to come back. You can see that his remaining units are starting to waver, and army losses should be defeating him, and that will be a win for the Juki. So, very cool, very uh, thematic battle under the water. I thought that was a really neat one. I was happy to show it to you guys. Uh, really good strategy by Rep. Good game to you. So, let's go ahead and look at the in-screen breakdown to talk about some of the keys for my success. And, uh, yeah, I mean... I think splitting up the army, sending a unit of Harkin executioners to shut down that right flank was really important. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, the Manticores are always... I mean, I know that's in the meta right now, doing the Manticore summons just because it's so good. But um, I definitely would say Crone Hellebrone with that Gaze of Kane, uh, Kane being able to crush the front line um, also contributed. Also, you know, guys... Um, you know, when, when you're when you're fighting Skaven, a lot of times I'll say that I'm scared to bring a monstrous unit just because you know they have so much artillery. But you saw, I mean, on that whole long approach, guys, it only got it really down to, of two cannons, it was only able to get it down to, you know, about half health, a little bit below half health, which still left me a lot of, you know, usage, usage for it once it got into the front line. So I guess what I'm trying to say is don't be afraid to use your monstrous units. I mean, I guess it also depends on the map too, but, you know, yeah, sometimes it can really pay off because if I want to have that Caribbean, that help of abomination would have just destroyed my front lines, guys. I didn't have any dedicated anti larger set for these Cold One Knights, you know, which would have been hit by the Warp Lightning Cannon. So, yeah, I, you know, don't, don't be afraid to take him. And as for Rep, good game again. That's twice if you've been on the channel now. Um, way to be a good sport. And uh, I liked your build. Having these Death Glow Bombardiers and, uh, would usually work. I, I was just able to counter them with the, you know, the Mantic Cores that landed right on them. And, yeah, splitting your forces like that was really cool. So, And he also had some really good uses of his uh, his grace here, some of his magic attacks. So, all right, guys, it's Atticus. Hope you enjoyed that uh, Dark Elf play, and I'll see you next time. It'll be another Dark Elf game. All right, bye-bye.